Hi guys, welcome back to my channel. This is Indai RN, your nurse in charge. And on this video, we are going to talk about the nursing management of side effects of the chemotherapy. First, let's discuss what is side effect. This is actually the undesirable secondary effect which occurs in addition to the desired effect. Okay, and it may vary for each individual depending on the person's disease state, age, weight, gender, ethnicity, and general health. So that depends. So side effects develop in case-to-case -case basis. Okay, so since the development of side effect is depending on case-to-case -case basis, we have general side effects in the chemotherapy. I'm going to present to you the general side effect of the chemotherapeutic agents, and I have the mnemonics SANTAN. S A N T a -N. The first one or the first letter that is the stomatitis and serostomia. Stomatitis is a medical term for mouth sores. So this is the one. Meanwhile, here in the serostomia, that is actually dry mouth. Okay. Since we are actually referring to the mouth, we need to do oral care. You need to inspect mouth routinely because you need to check the development of the stomatitis. Okay. You need also to use soft toothbrush because it is painful for the patient. You need also to understand also their pain level. So use soft toothbrush. Using soft toothbrush prevent damaging the stomatitis. Therefore, prevent bleeding also. And use saline for mouth rinsing. Since we are speaking about the oral cavity, we also need to consider the patient's diet. So avoid spicy and citrus foods. Use ice chips or popsicles and give soft bland diet. You can also use viscous lidocaine for adult patients. This uh, lidocaine viscous or viscous lidocaine is a local anesthetic that is used to treat pain of a sore or irritated mouth. However, it is contraindicated that you are going to give this viscous lidocaine to the child patients because they may cause serious side effects or death in infants or children under 3 years old. It is not really recommended since it attacks the gag reflex. And before you are going to use it, consider the opinion of your medical provider. The next side effect is alopecia or loss of hair. In here, we need to consider the self-esteem of the patient. So give information about alopecia before the chemotherapy, okay? We need to consider our patient's feeling, especially their self-esteem. In answering chemotherapeutic agents, especially speaking about patient safety and patient's welfare, always remember Maslow's, okay? Their self-esteem. So give accurate information about alopecia before the chemotherapy since this alopecia may begin two to three weeks of the chemotherapy and it ends after three months or the hair will regrow may begin at eight weeks you can give this information to your patients okay Female patients can use wigs. Meanwhile, male patients can use cup. If the patient's already suffering from loss of hair, they can do preempted hair cut. The next side effect is the nausea and vomiting. The cost of nausea and vomiting in this case is actually unknown, but it is linked to the following. That is activation of receptors, stimulation of the peripheral autonomic and vestibular pathways, and there is an activation of serotonin. Remember that vomiting is the most common side effect of the chemotherapy, and it may persist for as long as 24 to 48 hours. For delayed nausea and vomiting, they can suffer one week after the chemotherapy. The nursing management, on the other hand, here in the nausea and vomiting is that you can give the patient a small, frequent, high-calorie, high-potassium, high-protein diet and give them foods that are easily swallowed, okay? Always do frequent mouth care and have a pleasant environment. Remember that these patients are already suffering from pain, so you need to protect them as much as possible, okay? Since chemotherapeutic agents actually attack the abnormal cells, they also affect the normal cells and the RBC and platelet are not excluded in the attack. The thrombocytopenia or we call it the low platelet count and the anemia or we call it the low hemoglobin count are counted in the side effects of chemotherapeutic agents. Look at this picture here. This is an example of anemia because the eyelid is pallor. Meanwhile, Bruises are also part of the thrombocytopenic problem and the last picture is an oral problem with pedicure. So if you see these manifestations to your client while they are doing chemotherapy, 
consider doing these activities, okay? Assess skin and mouth for signs of bleeding. Check stools, urine, and emesis because the patient might have an internal bleeding. Next is avoid anticoagulants and antiplatelet medications. The next one is no shaving using straight razors to prevent bleeding and use electric razor. The next one is gentle oral care with soft bristled toothbrush and no suppositories and enemas. Remember that we are preventing further complications to these patients and we are always prioritizing their welfare. Also, use stool softeners to prevent exertion and bleeding in the rectal area. Encourage also the use of water-based lubricant before sexual activities and platelet transfusion as prescribed. These are the measures that we can use in preventing further complications of thrombocytopenia. In anemia, here are some. Assess for skin pallor, schedule activities with rest periods, and administer erythropoietin as ordered. Why do we need to schedule activities with rest period? Remember that your patient is having low hemoglobin and in hemoglobin, there is oxygen involved, okay? Let's prevent fatigue to our patient, so schedule their activities. The next side effect is anorexia. The anorexia is actually common in the chemotherapy because chemo has effect on taste buds. And chemotherapeutic agents actually make food taste metallic, especially the meat. So if you see that the patient is already suffering from anorexia, you can place patient in comfortable position during eating, maintain good hygiene, serve food attractively, and provide general comfort. In answering questions in nursing examinations, especially in the side effects of chemotherapeutic drugs, you can use the Maslow's hierarchy of needs. Okay, always remember your mass loss. Anorexia can affect the physiologic needs of the patient. Okay, the next one is the neutropenia. It's again in the blood. Always assess for signs of infection like fever, abnormal lung sound, and cough. Okay, the next one is practice cleanliness. Remember that our patient, we need to put them into reverse isolation. Okay. And in reverse isolation, that is positive pressure. Hand washing before and after procedures and neutropenic diet. That means no flowers, fresh fruits, vegetables, and raw foods. Okay? So, that is Santan. Stomatitis and serostomia, alopecia, nausea and vomiting, thrombocytopenia and anemia, anorexia, and neutropenia. Remember also that in chemotherapy, always remember chemotherapy. That stands for C, check for plebitis and extravasations. H, high calorie and high protein diet. E, encourage hydration. M, monitor CBC. Why? Because of the thrombocytopenia, anemia, and neutropenia. And they are all seen in the complete blood count result. O for oral examination for stomatitis. T, teratogenic. H, loss of hair is a concern. Remember alopecia. E, encourage counseling. Remember self-esteem problem. R, report for complications, especially in the laboratory results, any bleedings, and fatigue. A, administer anti-emetic. Remember that nausea and vomiting. B, Practice aseptic technique at all times. Why? Because the patient is suffering from neutropenia. And why? You should wear gloves, gown, and mask when handling chemotherapeutic drugs. Of course, you need to protect yourself also. Okay? So I hope it's clear. So I guess that's all for this video. There are still other topics that I'm going to share here in this topic in oncology nursing. So keep on subscribing and might as well click that notification bell so you're going to be updated on the reviews that I'm going to share. Don't forget to check the other videos that I have on this channel. Maybe they can help you. If you guys need some help again in nursing topics or if you have some difficulties in nursing, you can comment your problem down below and maybe I can help you. So thank you so much guys for watching. Don't forget to give me a thumbs up and share this video to your friends. See you on my next video. Bye!